Our next speaker needs no introduction. It's Katina Jones, and she's going to speak on the topic of are your cats second-class citizens? Now, when you listen to her talk, she actually has some pretty amazing prizes. I'm quite jealous because I'm not in the running for them. They are amazing cat-oriented prizes that she's going to give away. But when you listen to her talk, I want you to keep one question in mind, and that is... What is one thing you learned today that you intend to impl implement to improve the lives of cats in your care in the future? So please keep that question in mind. Also, just before I welcome Katina to the stage, I want to acknowledge our wonderful sponsors, exhibitors and supporters for making this event possible and making sure you're all hydrated and, and well uh, caloried up. Thank you very much, Katina. Thank you. So I'll try to keep it interesting because I know we just had a snack and some coffee. And if you have to go to the, to the I, I have a hard time saying it, to the toilet. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bathroom, and I know that's very strange. Um, feel free. It's okay. If you need to walk out, I'm okay with that. So I want to talk about how we handle our cats and our facilities. And this is a, a question that I sometimes pose. If you're driving by and you see a dog, how many of you would stop? If you were driving by and you saw a cat on the side of the road, how many of you would stop? That's a significant difference. And why might that be? It's probably options. We have a place to take dogs. There's a plan in place for dogs. Dogs can't be roaming. There's laws preventing it. And we have a phone number to call. We have somebody that can come and help pick them up or take them from you. And we also maybe in our industry have become desensitized because there's so many cats. There's just another one. If I just keep driving, there's another one and another one. And maybe they don't have the best public image. If there's a general public opinion that this is a nuisance and not a companion, it makes us less sensitive to their needs. So if the general public can see them as equal to dogs, then maybe we'll start to make a little bit of a difference in combination with massive desexing programs, which have already been talked about today, which I completely support and love. And the big issue, I think, in our shelters is it's easy to walk past the cats in the cage because they're sitting there and they're content. They're eating, they're drinking, they're sleeping, but the dogs are barking and they're crying, and they're spinning, so they grab our attention more, and we think they need us more. They need to get outside today. But that cat hasn't left its cage in days, possibly weeks, but the dogs have to get out every day. So what I want to have you guys work on to the best of your ability is everything that you do for your dogs, you also do for your cats. Not literally. I don't need you to have leash walking with the cats or dog-dog playgroups with the cats, <laughs> but the equivalent of. So a lot of you, I'm sure, are familiar with the five freedoms, the hunger and thirst freedom, freedom from discomfort, having a comfortable place to rest, the medical freedom of comfort, not having to worry about pain or distress or disease. But what about the fourth freedom, being allowed to express natural, normal behavior? How many of your cats have this freedom? St I know some of the facilities absolutely have it, but some don't, and it's very difficult to implement, and I get that. And how about that other freedom of freedom from distress and fear? These are five requirements that all animals should have, and I want you guys to try to think in your minds when you go back and go through all five of these. And does everyone have them? The cute puppies, the cute kittens. But also keep in mind this applies to the animals that we eat and also the animals that we don't necessarily like. All animals deserve these things. So your pregnant nursing moms deserve it. Your sick old ones that are stuck in the back deserve it. The aggressive ones in your care deserve it. And the scared ones in your care deserve it. Every animal in your care should have all five. Oh my God, how am I gonna possibly do this? These people just keep adding and adding to our day. I get that. So 
if you can take one little thing, that's, that's all I want, just one little thing. And then t I, I get that you have this major task that you live and breathe and sleep, it's constant. But just remember, an object at rest stays at rest until an outside force acts on it. An object in motion remains in motion if that outside force acts on it. If you don't try, it's not gonna happen. But if you do it, it'll start rolling and it'll get faster and faster and it gets easier and easier. So I want you to think about, do you have paid staff that handle your vet care? Or somebody who provides it, potentially not your employee, but a consultant or somebody who helps you? Paid staff that takes care of the animals, the cleaning and the feeding? Perhaps somebody that helps with marketing, maybe it's a volunteer, or you have somebody specifically who's doing your social media, your websites. Do you have somebody who's in a paid position of management or maintenance? Do you have people who are fixing things and mowing the lawn and fixing the leaky roofs? These are all people with skilled gifts, things that they can contribute, that's their specialty. But how many of us have truly skilled behavior staff that's paid to do their job? Skilled and qualified. Oh God, we have to afford one more staff member, one more job, I can't afford it, I can't do it. What if we can start to delegate? What if we can have one person that knows what they're doing and create a program? and start delegating, tap into the staff and volunteers that have a knack for this, have a specialty, a special interest in, maybe we can redirect just five minutes of their day. Or maybe you can seek out skilled volunteers. Are there any dog trainers out there who are willing to come and help us train cats? If you get one trainer to come one day a month and you do that times four trainers, that's cats being trained every week. And there's a lot of trainers who'll do that. They'll give you a couple of hours once a week. Some won't, but some will. But we don't know until we ask. And the more, time, the more hands we have, the more people we can get together to do this stuff, the more effective we're gonna be. And the more you cheer them on, the more likely they are to do it. Just like with pets, if we don't reward, they don't perform. So we have to keep urging our staff and our volunteers, let them know this is working. Look at what we've done. This is great, you are awesome. And create an incentive for them. Some way to measure, look at this, look at, look at this, this improved behavior that I have recorded on paper that demonstrates this is effective. Because sometimes it feels like you're just kind of shoveling crap against the tide, right? It just keeps coming and coming. And your efforts aren't working. But if we can measure behavior and improvement in our care, then it starts to make people excited. And can we delegate and have this person do a little bit and this person do a little bit and spread out that behavior? One way that you can start working on this is have a scheduled task list for your cats. So this is just a little example that I've made up where we have our tasks that have to be done every day and then we have the time that occurs. So think of this like, you know, um, I don't know if you guys have, when you go into a public bathroom there's a, the last time this bathroom was cleaned and somebody puts their initials in the time, same idea. But we are actually tracking it because it's easy to forget a task when we're, you're doing one thing and then you go off and you're doing something else and then you're doing something else and before you know it, you've been at work two hours late. So in addition to the feeding and the cleaning, are we providing appropriate bedding? Are we pro providing appropriate toys? Are we providing appropriate enrichment? We have a scheduled day at a scheduled time where we implement enrichment for our cats. And there's a lot of different options for enrichment. We're gonna touch on that a little bit. And you can spread it out. So you can do your some stuff in the morning, maybe you do enrichment afternoon, and then you do your final things at the end of the day. And also keeping track of what's being done. So maybe you do puzzles on Mondays, and maybe you do scent enrichment on Wednesdays, and you do social time on Fridays. So if you have a set schedule, then everybody knows this is what happens on this day and it's more likely to happen instead of we need to do enrichment, period. That's really hard to do. So if we have a, a plan, it can make it happen much easier. 
and the thought of doing enrichment can be really overwhelming. So this is something that I help some shelters build, and it's just a little cat cart. Uh, that cart in the US, you can get it to your shelter for under $100. And it doesn't have to be this cart. It can be a wheelbarrow, I don't really care. Some, it could be a backpack. Just some way to organize this so I don't have to go to this closet and get this thing and go to this closet and oh crap, we're out of toilet paper rolls. And you create it and you stock it. So maybe on Saturdays, we restock the cat cart and make sure we've got everything. So we've got bedding to f provide soft spots. We've got hide spots in case a cat that's fearful needs an extra. We've got everything organized. This is my bin for food uh, enrichment. This is my bin for puzzle toys. This is my bin for scent enrich enrichment. And everything is organized and right on the cart. So I grab my cart, I grab my Wednesday bin, scent, scent, scent. I grab my cart, I grab my auditory enrichment, and I put the CD in. And if you are organized ahead of time, it can make implementing it much easier. Try to get creative with doing this. And these are all businesses that I found in, um, in th this area. Sometimes you can get an outside business that has nothing to do with animals to help offset the cost. So maybe you can buy a stereo with good quality um, sound and some relaxation CDs for your cat room and have it sponsored by the local radio station or a local tech uh, business or stereo store or car stereo store or contact a kid's toy store. A this is a mom and pop's kid's toy store to help you provide cat toys. So let's try to think outside the box as much as we can. So we all know that enrichment is an important thing. And these are just some of the things that you can, you want to provide so that one of those freedoms was to engage in natural behavior. You have to remember, what, what do cats do? They run, they chase, they scratch, they sniff, they listen. These are all things that we want our cats to do. And this is a little example of a lovely enrichment. So this cat has a friend, it has a window, there's a bird feeder outside of that window, and that bed on the bottom is scented with, um, they put below it some bedding from the bird's cage that was in the facility. So it's just something interesting, it's something new to do. And also, as a side note, make sure your litter boxes are adequate. So if your cage space is too small for a litter box, it's too small for the cat. And we need to provide appropriate litter boxes for our cat. Um, I gave the example of the, the porta potty. Nobody likes that. It's really difficult for cats, and it, it can stress them out to have an inappropriate bathroom. So do your best to provide an appropriate size. And what that is is large enough to have an area to defecate and large enough to have an area to urinate. So think of it like a crate for a dog, similar size. Stand up, turn around, that's about the size. We also want to provide time out of the cage. Sometimes we can't do that, but we have to get them out of their cage. It's, they have to. It, it, it's, we have to make it happen, however you can. Maybe it's just bringing them into an office for a little while, or maybe you have a cat colony space, or maybe you can have a local construction company help you build an outdoor catio where the cats can hang out. Um, this is a facility who contacted this company and had them provide one of these exercise wheels and they just rotate the cats and this cat <laughs> would get off, get a drink and get back on for hours. So I, th I think she was a roamer, <laughs> I don't know, but she can cover miles and you don't have to do a thing. She's out of her cage, she's exercising, she's thinking, she's engaging, and the other cats come by and try to get in, and she's like, <coughs> it's my wheel. So you can have some social interaction with each other. We also want to think about stress reduction and all of uh, the ideas that we've kind of touched on, uh, keeping cats away from their dogs, separate species areas, noise reduction as much as possible. Cats are incredibly sensitive to noise. And if you have those metal cages, the slamming of the cages shut or the sound of the cleaning equipment coming through, that can be really, really difficult for cats. So it's important to do the best that you can to try to impact that noise and try to reduce it as much as possible. And also, smell for cats is a huge, huge stressor and a sense that they use in a way that we can't even fathom 
So we want to make sure we're doing spot cleaning where we're not doing a full cage clean. It's super stressful for cats. If we're doing a full cage clean, the cat is coming into a new place every day. They're coming into the shelter for the first time every day. So spot cleaning is critical. And if you don't know what spot cleaning is, it's if there's a little poop smear on the floor, you spray it and you wipe it up. You shake the bedding. If there's a little bit of dried vomit on it, you scrape it off and you put it back in. They are not going to get sick from themselves. They can't infect themselves from anything. You scoop the box and you put it back. If you do a full wash of their bedding, a full wash of their litter box, a full wash of their food, and a full wash of their cage. Yesterday I talked about chronic stress. Every single day you are ripping their world apart. Every day. And we know from research there is actually a decrease in disease problems with spot cleaning. It goes against our nature sometimes if you're used to that full clean, but if you switch to spot cleaning, and I can give you data to back this up, you will cut your cleaning time incredibly. And then you do a full clean once a week. Maybe Fridays you'd clean all the litter boxes. Tuesdays you clean all the food bowls. And obviously as needed, if a cat goes crazy and there's crap all over the place, you clean it up. So this is another little enrichment item this is my cat, he's incredibly lazy. And this is a Kong wobbler for cats. If you're not familiar with it, it has one little hole and they bat it around to get the food to come out. So if you can, instead of having bowls, have this in their cage or a homemade version of it, that's a great enrichment tool. It takes the same amount of time to feed them. Obviously it's gonna cost money to buy that, but you can sterilize it between cats. Once you've got it, you've got it forever. So e even if you can find somebody in the public to sponsor one cat wobbler, that's one more cat wobbler than you had yesterday. Just one, that's okay. We also wanna make sure we get social interaction. So just like for our dogs, our cats are having time to interact with each other, if they want it. If they're not social and it's not enjoyable for them, then, then it's not appropriate. But if it's a cat who wants to be social, we need to be providing them with some access. So this is our local shelter where I live and the cats, are, there's no cages. Um, the cages are wide open and all of these cats just kind of hang out. I was doing some training so they were all up in my business. And they just, they hang out and we can see who's appropriate and who's not. And then there's a separate area for the ones that need to be alone. Group housing is definitely an option. There's considerations with colonies and health and there's um, information on colony housing in your, your little flash drives that uh, can help you set that up, how to introduce cats into a colony. We also wanna think about our kittens. So just like socialization for our puppies, how many of you have a socialization plan for your puppies? There should be more hands. How many of you have puppies? There, that's good, all right. <laughs> that's the, the ratio that I like. How many of you have kittens? How many of you socialize your kittens? How many of you socialize according to science that tells us what socialization these kittens need? Or is it random? Is it what we think is socializing? Because there's certain things that cats need. This is also on your thumb drive. This is a kitten socialization that, uh, chart that was created by Sophia Yin, who was one of the most amazing people I've ever known. And it helps us track it. We know exactly what we're doing. We know how the kitten is responding to it. So if you're already doing socialization, gold star, because there are so many places that don't socialize their kittens at all. So let's, let's organize it. Let's make it a formal program where we keep track. Our fear, we wanna make sure we're managing that and taking care of it. This is a little example. This cat is terrified. So she has everything up above. So I asked if she wanted to interact and she gave me a big nope. Okay, she has a place to go. And if she doesn't want to interact, she doesn't have to interact. So considerations if medication is in order for an incredibly fearful cat. A lot of people are afraid of behavioral pharmacology. But if we give medicine for cats that need it physically, there are some cats and dogs that need it mentally and foster care whenever it's possible. A big one, knowing the difference between stray and feral. This has come up multiple times. A feral cat is a wild animal. If you're touching it, it's not feral. If it's in, within 10 feet of you, 
it's not feral. If you see it, it's not feral. A feral cat will not approach a human, it will not meow, it won't interact, it won't seek anything from humans. It's completely separate, completely independent, and survives on its own. So if it's a clean, neat cat that looks like a pretty def decent weight, that might be feral, but if it's all messed up and banged up and dirty, that's probably a companion cat that isn't able to survive on its own. Feral cats can take care of themselves on their own, so they're healthy. They can clean themselves. Stray cats that are out there don't have those skills, so those are the ones that look all jacked up. So we want to keep in mind that difference, and behaviorally, you, you can tell the difference. The ones that are slinking and crouching low might be feral. If a cat walks up to you and it's standing upright, it's not feral. So there's online resources where you can go through and check off what feral means and what feral doesn't mean. Um, so my comparison is um, possums. You guys have possums here. If you have a possum in a trap, you can imagine how it would act, right? That's a feral cat. Anything less than that is not feral. Keep that in mind. And I know some of you disagree with me, but that's okay. <coughs> so this is a little something that came to my attention in April in Brisbane. So this was an assessment that was done on a cat, and it was deemed not appropriate for adoption. I just want you to read that assessment. This is stuff that's happening, and it's really scary. And the only way that we can do this to fix this is what you guys are doing right now, is sitting, learning, taking time out of your day. You, could, you guys could all be at the beach right now, and we wouldn't know, but you're choosing to spend your time here and learn. And this organization put this together for you to have the opportunity to learn so that this doesn't happen anymore. It's still out there, but if we can get less and less and less, then that can make a huge different, um, difference. And I would like to change this top word from assessments to testing, because I, I changed that slide and I forgot to change that title. Stop with the cat testing, please. They're not effective, they're not predictive, they are not reliable, they're not replicable. Assessments throughout their stay are what we need to be doing. Those one-time photographic momentary tests, they're just not real. It's like speed dating and choosing if you want to marry them or not. I've talked to them for five minutes and I'm going to decide if I'm going to marry them or not marry them. It's, it's not realistic. So it's a photograph, just one moment. You can't learn about someone from a single photograph. But if you have an album full of photographs, you can really get to know who they are. So let's try to change our language and get that word test out of there. Get that words, those words pass and fail out of there. And let's look at assessments across the duration of their stay. How does their behavior, uh, how is their behavior in the home previous, if we can get it upon intake, the first week, the second week, the third week? How is it in the adoption in the new home? If they come back, we want that information. So that's an assessment. We still want to be doing that, but not the tests. The goal is to make sure we're doing some clicker training and mod behavior modification with our cats, just like we are with our dogs. How many of you guys are doing clicker training or some sort of training or some sort of behavior modification for your dogs? How many are you doing it for your cats? Yay! How many of you are going to start doing it with your cats when you get back? Yay! If you do it with one cat and figure it out with one cat, I'm happy. And let me tell you a little secret. If you can click or train a cat, you can click or train a dog. Cats will, dogs are very forgiving. If you time your clicking wrong or you feed them at the wrong point or you catch the wrong thing, dogs are like, oh, I know what you meant. But a cat is done. Dude, you suck at this. I'm out. <laughs> Work with cats. Clicker training cats will really hone your skills and you'll get even better with your dogs. So working with your cats actually will make your dogs better. Also keep in mind, Nobody likes boring stuff, so work on those cage cards. Work on the descriptions that you're putting online and make sure that they're interesting. S please stop with the sob stories. They're s we're saturated with them. There's so many sob stories that the public sometimes feels overwhelmed. They're, every cat is abused. Every dog has missing leg. It's, we keep focusing on this negative stuff, and maybe let's focus on the really cool stuff. Find that one thing about that cat that's really amazing. Get a great picture of it outside of the cage 
and find the positive stuff. This is my favorite. This is the Australian high-level gold standard. Do you guys know about this guy? Everybody does, right? That's, that's your goal. This is who you want. Because I saw him on my social media in the US. Everybody knows who he is. But who knows who that, he's never had a home. No one's ever loved him. He's never known a safe night in his life. Please, won't someone come rescue him? <sighs> this cat is that. That's what we want. I also want you to keep in mind, know your market. This is a little research that I did. I can get an online, go to your gum tree, I discovered gum tree, and I can find a purebred kitten for $450 that is not desexed, and I can breed it. Or I can come to a shelter and pay $200. The public doesn't care if they're vaccinated and desexed. They want a cat. So keep in mind, these are out there. You're charging $200 for a four-month-old kitten, I can go online and get one for free. I'm not saying give all your cats away for free, obviously. But if you have a special case, consider removing that, ado uh, that adoption fee. It's terrifying. I know, but it works. There is nothing to support how much someone spends on their pet, making them love them even more. It actually says the ones who tend to get them for free tend to keep them longer because they got them based on love. They just couldn't let them go. He picked me. So consider reductions, consider programs where it's seniors for seniors. If you're a senior citizen, how, whatever your age is is your adoption fee. It's your cat is $103 and he's also 103. If there's two cats that seem to like each other, buy one, get one free Tuesdays, free cat Fridays. It will get them out, empty those cages, get them out so that we can help the other cats that are out there that need us. Let's help with that adoption process a little bit. I know you guys have talked about this. These are some of the requirements that I saw on some of the Australian rescues. A mandatory 20-page adoption booklet. Are you kidding? Who's going to... Uh, remember the previous slide where I can get one for free? How many hours a day do you work? More than eight hours, no cat. They will come and inspect your windows to make sure that your screens are sturdy. What? <laughs> These are obviously really extreme examples and I found some awesome adoption applications. But just kind of keep in mind, we know from um, studies in the US that they f the general public finds the adoption policies that rescues and shelters are implementing to be too invasive. They're they feel judged, they feel like they're not adequate, and they're not enjoying the experience of getting pets from rescue. I would be rejected from most rescues in my state because I don't have a fenced-in yard. My dog is not current on her distemper vaccine. She's old, there's a reason why she's not current. I'm not an irresponsible pet owner, I'm actually quite responsible. But I would be rejected for some of these reasons. So let's, let's not have the bar be us. We are not standard, we are not the normal. We are the exceptional. How many of you have a really crappy pet owner, sister, or brother, or cousin? We all do, right? That's the average pet owner. That's who we have to adopt to, because that's reality. So this I already talked about. See what works, try to get them adopted. That post-adoption support, no fault return policies. This is a program through HSUS where if you bring the cat back, it's okay. Thank you for bringing him back to me. Because I know you could have let him go, you could have killed him, you could have sold him, you could have done anything, but you chose us. Thank you for bringing him back, because it didn't work out. Maybe you didn't like how much he shed. I can talk about you in the lunchroom, I can think about you in my mind, but to your face, I'm going to thank you, and I'm going to smile, and I'm gonna help you find a cat that doesn't shed so much. And maybe even let's stop talking about it in the lunchroom, too. Maybe let's stop thinking about it in our minds, too. And just think, they chose me. They chose me. They chose me. God damn it. They chose me. We have to start being less critical. We want people to come to us. 
provide resources to maybe do some interventions and keep those cats in homes before they come out and provide resources, referrals to folks who do um, behavior assistance with cats. There's a lot of people who do virtual consults. I've got clients in Germany, Greece. I've got two in Australia where I'm helping them with litter box problems or aggression problems. We're out there. There's people that can help with this. There's webinars and videos on TV or on TV, on, um, online that you can work on. This is an HSUS program and it's available for download. You can go right on this website and it's how to attract adopters, how to work on your adoption policies, how to conduct interviews, how to match, and how to welcome relinquishments. Everybody should leave your building with a smile and they should enjoy your business. If you go back and you're concerned thinking maybe my cats need a little, little something, I want you to look at your data and check out that average length of stay. How long is the average length of stay for cats in your building? And maybe compare youngsters, middle age, and seniors. What is your adoption rate? And what is your euthanasia rate? And then you implement something that you've learned, and then in a month you look at that data again. And in a month you look at that data again. And if you start to see an improvement, that helps you get funding. That helps you get community support. That helps build momentum from the volunteers and from the staff, and it gets people to buy into it more. If I can get you to commit to one month and track a before and an after, you will get your staff on board. They'll see the change, and you can show it to them, and it makes it tangible. And you can have an impact on these things, and maybe reduce a couple and increase a couple. So some of the hurdles that are out there. So this was where I was going to do um, some quizzes, but I've got, I'm going to have a little bit of extra time. Where am I with time? Okay, I've got lots of time left. Um, so I want you to think about what are some of the hurdles that you're facing. And if anybody is brave and wants to yell out some of those hurdles, let's just get one. What's the biggest hurdle? And let's try to solve it. What's that? Money. How can we fi fix it? Who has an idea? What's something that you have done that's been successful for your group? Let's share resources instead of resource guarding. Who has done a program that has been successful and raised money that was a little outside of the box? Nobody? Yeah. $40,000? Panhandling. <laughs> smart. Yeah. Real smart. Maybe you have a little basket that's shaped like a cat. We want to improve the lives of our cat. Give me a quarter. They dress up like dogs and cats. That's cute. Little cat hats. I would like to point out that I'm wearing cats, in case you haven't noticed. These are cats. These are cats. These are cats. There's interesting stuff out there. Use a stuffed cat. Help make my life better. Panhandling. Great idea. Who thought of panhandling? Wow. What's another idea? Nobody? That's impressive. Pimping out your kittens. <laughs> Get some adopted. You take them to corporate businesses, maybe some stressed out people who've never held a kitten before. Who doesn't like a kitten? And maybe they get adopted. Maybe you get a little bit of money. And you charge them to hold your kittens. And the kittens get socialized at the same time. Pimp your puppies, pimp your kittens. 
If you have a really cool cat that does something, take it somewhere, do something with it, pimp your cats. In lieu of, um, we have a lot of that in the U.S. Kids are asking instead of birthday gifts for donations to local shelters, um, and they come in with truckloads of stuff. And they had a, a pug rescue come, and that reminds me of something. So I have a, a training facility. Frenchie Rescue contacted me and asked if they could have a birthday party. I made money off a pug or off a Frenchie birthday party. If you know people with really cute dogs like that, that people ooh and ah over, have a Frenchie day. Really well-behaved, cute dogs and cute cats and cute kittens, donate. Have somebody pay for that. That's awesome. Or have your dog walk around in an office building. And the kittens, the puppies, great idea in lieu of. Any other ideas? Go fund me. Up to seven thousand dollars in twenty-four hours. How about a picture of a cat? I've been here. I'm sad and I'm scared. Maybe this is where you do your sob stories. Because if I need to adopt this cat that has a sob story and I can't do it, I feel helpless. But if I see this cat and I have a specific goal that you're working toward, we would like to buy this cat a treadmill. Can you donate? I can do that. That's an action that the public can take, that they can touch. They can know, look at this, five bucks, a dollar. If a hundred people did give you a dollar, you just bought yourself a cat wheel. And that cat wheel lasts forever. So go fund me for specific products. Sponsor a cage. I used to do that. Businesses would get their name on a cage for a certain period of time, and any of the money that they donated went to that cage. It, you Obviously, it's impossible to do that, but that cage was always the best-looking cage, and we would rotate the cats that got to live in that special cage. And then we would contact them in six months when their sponsorship ran out, and they would renew it and renew it, and they started getting business from it, and we started getting more and more, and eventually every one of our cat cages had a business sponsorship on it. And all of those cats had everything they needed. And if somebody came in and there was one cage where the cat, during the daytime, didn't have something that the other cats had, at night he obviously got all of that stuff. And when nobody was looking, he got all that stuff. Oh my god, that poor cat. I'm going to sponsor him. We used to do Christmas stockings. We would hang stockings on the front of their cage and have all of these products for sale. And somebody could go buy one of those products and put it in the stocking for the cat or put it in the stocking for the dog. We had little baskets. Do you guys have St. Patrick's Day? Does the world have St. Patrick's Day? I have no idea. Which isn't Irish, by the way. <laughs> Ireland doesn't have St. Patrick's Day, as far as I know. Little Easter baskets hanging on their cages. I can buy a cat toy and put it in that cat's basket and know this cat's gonna get that thing that I bought. That's a tangible thing that the public can do instead of a dollar in a box. It's the same thing, essentially. Any other ideas? Corporate volunteering. <laughs> Team bonding experience. Some corporations pay for the opportunity to come in and interact with an animal or maybe two animals. And it's a team bonding exercise that's run or facilitated by somebody that can make that an effective program who pay for that. Any other ideas? Yeah. Large foster program. Foster to adopt. Eighteen kittens.
the foster to adopt, that's a huge, hugely successful thing. We have to trust people with these, with these animals. The public is their future. That's who they're going to live with. We have to trust them to foster, fostering kittens. So I'm thinking about getting a kitten. Really, I happen to have a litter. Would you like to foster the entire litter? And perhaps keep one or three. <laughs> so the point being, money is a hurdle. I get it. Time is a hurdle. You have restrictions on your staffing. This isn't easy. It's difficult. It's a huge challenge. But here are ideas that other people have done that have worked. Try something. If it doesn't work, it doesn't mean that it can't work. It means maybe change it or try something else. Keep trying. Keep that wheel moving forward because if it stops again, it's hard to get it started. But once you get it started and it starts going, then we can start to have some improvement. We can have easier adoptions, post-adoption support, address all five freedoms, and we have more skilled staff that's interacting with the public. So I just want to recognize PetSafe, who is, has given me the prizes that I'm giving out to you guys, and a couple people who helped me out, and also this organization that has done an amazing job. I'm super impressed with this. So thank you guys very much. Here's my contact info if you need it. And Want to do some prizes? Oh, I also want to mention one more thing. There are that International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants that I mentioned yesterday. They have online programs. There's online mentorships. I'm teaching an eight-week online cat consulting mentor mentorship. There's also aggression in dogs, shelter dog behavior. And there's also an online eight-week course in shelter dog behavior. This is probably the best online course I've ever seen. It's Trish McMillan, if you guys saw her in previous conferences. She's amazing. You, is, this will change the lives of your shelter dogs. If you can get it together, I don't see the price on here. There it is. I'm not going to say the price out loud. <laughs> Maybe do some panhandling. <laughs> but it's worth it, I swear. OK, thank you, guys. <laughs>